talking about the big deal. Okay? And what's the biggest deal? I do hope you're not entering Christianity to get a lousy deal. Some of us, we enter Christianity or we go to church dahil gusto natin mabless. That's a lousy deal. What I'm saying is, as Christians, you are already blessed. And we've talked about that last week. Our standpoint is, blessed na ako. And that's why when I come to church, I don't come to church to get more blessing. I'm blessed. That's why I go to church. Right? And many try to treat God as a genie. And so what happens is, uh, we look at finances as if we're always in lack and we need more and more of blessing rather than look at ourselves and say, blessed na pala ako, no? And that would change how we would actually um, uh, handle our personal finance. As what I said last week, our blessing is more relational than financial. What God is offering, it's not financial breakthrough. It's not. It's part of the deal, but it's not the big deal. The big deal is His relationship with us. And that's why uh, if you could listen to the podcast last week, for the continuation of this week, we talk about Deuteronomy 7. Today, we'll look at Deuteronomy 8. Right? That the blessing of God is more relational than financial. Okay? You can have all the money in this world, but without Jesus, what happens? Okay? Money starts to take control over your life. Okay? Money starts to dictate you rather than you dictating where your money should go because money is now your Lord and money is the object that you worship. So you don't want to go that route. What you want is to have a relationship with Jesus. Make that strong. Have a proper perspective pagdating sa pera so that you could be able to apply sound biblical principles when it comes to our finances. Right? Today, we'll look at the continuation of the text and focus on the power given to us to produce wealth and the reason why we are given that power. Alam niyo ba, sabi sa Bible, binigyan daw tayo ni Lord ng power to produce wealth. And it's actually good news. It means Christians should be not the most richest people in the world, but Christians must be able to produce wealth and be a blessing to others because God has given us the power to do so. In Deuteronomy 8, let me read, and we'll read the whole chapter, okay? but I'll, I'll jump off, off in some points. It says, the whole commandment that I command you today, shall be care- you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that He might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep His commandments or not. So this was jumping off from Deuteronomy 7. Ang dami niyang prinami sa atin sa Deuteronomy 7. We read that last week. And he said, I've allowed you to go through the desert. Riding a horse with no name. Okay, kanta yun, no? Why? In verse 2, he says that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart. Again, dahil si God relational, hindi lang siya all about finances. Mas concern niya yung puso natin kaysa yung wallet natin. Sabi niya, inalaw ko kayo pumunta doon. Bakit? Kasi gusto ko makita kung anong nasa puso niyo. Gusto ko lumabas kung anong nasa puso niyo. Right? And that's why I've allowed these things. Whether you would keep my commandments or not. And he humbled you, verse 3. And he, and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he, may, he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And God says, you know what? I humbled you. Hindi lang humbled you. Actually, may mga days, ginutom ko kayo. Ito yung Lord na abundant in provision. Sabi niya, actually, may mga araw, plinano ko magutom kayo. Right? And fed you with manna. For how many years? So that you may know that man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell this 40 years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. 
Again, you would see here that God is more concerned with you relationally than you being more financially uh, blessed. Okay? Kasi ang blessing talaga hindi lang financially. Kaya sabi ni Lord, mas concerned ko character mo. Mas concerned ko yung faith mo sa akin. More than all those things. And so if you come here with an attitude of, you know, God, I want more. Give me more money. Open heavens. Let the money come down. The Lord is saying, no, no, no. I want first to expose what's in your heart. Why? I love you so much. I won't just give you money. I'll teach you how to handle finances. I'll let you, I'll humble you. I'll make you hungry. I'll feed you manna for how many years? Maybe for 20, 30 years. Adobong mana, pritong mana, lahat. Okay? Yan ang pamana ko sa inyo. Alright? Minsan may quail. Alright? And I've allowed these things because I'm more concerned and I look at your heart. He would let us go through wilderness. 40 years yung Israelites. It is humbling. It is a test to know what's in our hearts. My dad, uh, my dad is Jesus. You, uh, you know that, alright? Para siyang si Jesus talaga. Humbling experience yung ginawa niya sa akin. Pinaral niya ako sa Lasal, of course, the best school, and no debate about that, okay? And it's in the scripture, okay? In Acts, it says Athenians just talk the whole day, okay? So, Acts, it's in the book of Acts, okay? Uh, but, nasana ba ako na wala tuloy ako, no? Hinambol ako from Lasal, after ko graduate, ginawa akong bodeguero. Hindi para humarap sa tao, kundi doon lang ako. Walang aircon, electric pan lang, di ba? May radio, walang TV. It was very humbling experience for me. I thought I was the child of the owner and I'll be there in the store. I'll be the model of our, uh, of our enterprise in Tutuban. Okay? Pero hindi nangyari. Hindi ganon. Ilang years of testing. Cargador, delivery boy, driver. Lahat ng pwedeng gawin. Okay? Para insulto yun ng isang lasal yan. <laughs> okay. de, de, para ma-build yung character. It's humbling. It's the testing. You have to be there early and you're the last to go. Why? After bodega, you count the money. You go to the store and you count the money. And I would do all these things. And it's humbling. Because, you know, this is not my dream. I don't want to be in bodega. I don't want to be warehouse boy. Okay. I want something bigger. But he's allowed those things. Ako yung tagasingin sa mga hindi nagbabayad, pag may utang, ako yung pinagmumura, sila na nga may utang, galit pa, di ba? And it's all those things that has helped actually me now. And I've learned the value of money. And that's why when I work as a pastor, as a pastor, and, I, and, and we got tithes and offerings, all of that now, parang, Ang, ang calculation ko hanggang ngayon, isang yarda ng tela pa rin yan, dalawang yarda yan, pag-ingatan natin. Why? Because of the testing and the humbling that came years before when God called me into full-time ministry. It was to expose what was in my heart because really, I despise those days. So I thought, bakit? Ba't ganito? Magpapastor na lang ako kaysa sa bodega. Wala akong kausap dito. Hindi ko na-advance yung gospel. Tela kausap ko. Di ba? But God allowed those things. When I started earning, kahit na nasa bodega, malaki pa rin kita. Di ba? Sabi nga ni Chinky, kahit liit mata, laki kita namin. Okay. Ang duling, doble kita. Okay, so. So, even though I was earning, we were hitting our quota, we were having commissions every month. In short, it might be... Uh, Miserable 8 to 6.30 p.m. But financially, it was very rewarding. And so when I got all the money, somebody approached and said, invest on this and I'll give you a certain 3% a month. And it was too nice an offer. And so I gave almost all my money and in two years' time, I lost everything. And again, my heart was exposed. Nice kam ako. No? Ewan ko sa inyo, ha, kung nagaganong kayo, hanggang ngayon, meron pa rin yan. Every year, meron pa rin na-scam ng mga Pinoy. Basta pag nag-offer yan ng mga 2, 3, 4% a month, huwag nyo nang pasukan yan kahit mukhang maganda. 
right? Because it's a scam. And so we were scammed. I lost everything, the things that I've worked hard for for the past two, three years, uh, faithfully going to the Bisoria, selling textile and doing bodega work. All of that gone because God was testing my heart. You see, to come to a position of being content and blessed in life, you will go through testing. You would go through times where your heart will be exposed. Alam nyo ba, marami sa atin dito, hindi talaga tayo mahirap. Mismanage lang ang pera. Marami sa atin dito, compared to other Filipinos, we're not actually poor. It's just, where did the money go? And I do hope you won't allow God to bring you pa to wilderness and humbling situations because now we're preaching the word and we have seminars to help you on how to handle your finances. So God is after our hearts more than anything else in this world. Okay? God knows our heart. And that's why, kung nakuha niya yung heart natin, and hear, hear me on this, tithing becomes a non-issue. I don't even have to preach 40 minutes about tithing. Why? Kasi alam mo, bless ka na eh. Generosity would be no problem. Why? It's not your money. It's God's money. Right? So yung mga minsan mga tanong, di ba? Pwede ba tight, gross net? I don't actually answer those things. Because we're missing the point. The point is the heart of generosity. A heart of generosity doesn't count 10%, 8%, 11%. You give with your heart. And when you give with your heart, most likely, it would go beyond 10. Why? Because, you know, you're already blessed. I don't need all these things. Yes, it's, there's a minimum according to Scripture. But if you go to the heart of it, it's not the law. It's the grace of giving. It's saying, Lord, you know, I'm giving more than what is expected of me. Why? Because this is yours. I'm blessed. And Lord, you've exposed my heart. My heart has always been, Lord, ano ba sa atin dyan? Lord, ano ba pwede kong makuha dyan? But when our heart is exposed and changed and transformed by the grace of God, the questions now become different. You don't even think that way. It's more of like, sino pa pwedeng bigyan? Saan pa pwedeng mag-sow? Saan pa pa pwedeng mag-ano? O, paano pa pa pwedeng tumulong sa Ian building? It changes. Because now it's no longer your money. It's God's money. becomes natural for us. God says, I let you hunger and fed you with manna. We go through that phase and season so that we might know that the only dependence we have should not be on our bank account or our salary. It's, it's with the Lord. The Bible says, man does not live on bread alone, but by God's word. Kailangan dependent daw tayo kay God and His word. So that means let supernatural provision and miracles be a daily occurrence. Hindi siya parang rare, yung provision ni Lord. Sana hindi siya rare sa atin. Di ba, isipin nyo may mana na bumababa everyday. Pag-ising mo, may, may tinapay ka na. Hindi ito galing sa sari-sari store. Galing ito sa langit. Di ba, pagbaba mo, may quail. Yeah. Yeah. Hindi niluto ni manang yon. Okay. God provides and there's supernatural provision that happens. And the only way, okay, the only way we come to that point of just supernatural provision and supernatural grace of provision and giving is when we've been tested and humbled and our hearts are exposed. Tawag natin dyan minsan discipline. Okay? We need discipline. Okay. May discipline ba tayo pagdating sa finances natin? Right? Hindi ibig sabihin ng discipline, may pinapalo tayo ni Lord. Kundi, di, minsan kasi hindi ka na kailangan paluin ni Lord eh. Kasi kung hindi ka disiplinado sa pera mo, pagtanda mo, wala kang pera. Yun na yung discipline mo. Magugutom ka, mamamatay ka, pupunta kang hell, hindi, loko lang. Diba? Yun na yung discipline. Okay, it means, you know, you're always lacking. Like, lagi na lang butas ang bulsa. That's the discipline. Okay? God doesn't need to discipline you anymore. Lagi kang may utang, lagi kang tumatago, lagi kang natatakot pag nagre-ring yung cellphone mo. 
Di ba? Pag may kumakatok, takot na ta- That's the discipline. It means, yung anak mo, kailangan ng pera, hindi mo mabigyan. Ikaw pa yung humihingi. That's the discipline. It's discipline. Okay? So, we see here that God, again, is after our hearts. It means He wants us to be disciplined. In verse 4, it says, Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your food did not swell for 40 years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in His ways and by fearing Him. How does God discipline us? By telling us to obey the guidelines and the commandments of a blessed man. Yan ang discipline, Lord. Sabi ni Lord, bibigay ko sa inyo. Ang blessing, ito ang gawin nyo. Right? Because I love to discipline you. Because I love you. I'm relational. I'm not unlike any other gods whom you just pray and they'll give it. No. I'll discipline you. Because we don't live by bread alone. Okay? Here is, um, I always share this in our seminars. This is Randall's baby steps to financial peace. Okay? Ibig sabihin ng baby steps, simple lang. Okay? Hindi kailangan tumatalon. Gusto ko yumaman agad! Uh, huwag mong basahin nyo kay Randall. Okay? Kasi hindi mangyari yun. Right? You need discipline. I've been, me and my wife, our family has been doing this for the past 10 years. Baby steps. Baby steps. To reach our financial goal. We're now step Five, investing on our future. Ibig sabihin, marami kami kailangan sabihin na no, hindi kami pwede. Ay, sayang, kayo na lang. Ay, hindi ngayon. Ay, wala sa budget. May pera kami, pero wala sa budget. Why? It's baby steps. And it takes discipline. Alam nyo ba, it takes more faith to save than to spend. It takes more faith to save than to spend. Sino sa inyo dito struggle nyo spending? Lord, give me the power to spend today. Wala, di ba? Na hindi ka nagpe-pray. Hala, labas, pera, yan. Ito pa, meron pa. O ito, 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 ale, o para sa'yo, pa, pa, sinasampal mo pa. Parang galit na galit ka, di ba? Sino dito nagpe-pray bagong bumili? Wala, no? Normal, o sige, swipe lang, swipe mo lang. Di ba? By faith. Di ba? Kasi ang bilis eh. Lalo na pag credit card. Bakit? Ibig sabihin credit eh. Wala ka pa. Bunyibili mo na. Di ba? But it takes actually more faith to save and make the blessings grow rather than spend on it. Tama? Yeah. Sino sa inyo? <laughs> pag pray nyo, yun yung umiya kay Lord. Wala na akong pera. Why? Because it takes more faith to save than to spend. Yeah? Sana gamitin natin yung prayer time natin na turuan tayo, Lord, turuan mo ako maging kontento sa buhay. Lord, turuan mo ako ng delayed gratification. Lord, di ko naman kailangan talaga ng bagong cellphone. Lord, masaya na ako sa 32-inch na TV. Hindi ko na kailangan ng 40 plus. Lord, masaya pa ako sa family computer ko. Okay? Or whatever. It takes more faith to save than to spend. You know, I would hear testimonies of entrepreneurs and ang sales talk nila ngayon, usong-uso. Pag nandito ka sa kumpanya, kumita ka, bumili ka ng sports car. Wow! Di ba? Ay, hindi, ano yan? Marketing yan. Mar- it's not marketing. It's dumb financial decisions. There's no discipline. It's gratification. It's fulfilling and making you look good. And I look at someone like Chinky, who's not here, Okay. Chinky, okay. Chinky, when he started in business, had an eight, ilang years yung Starex nyo, Novi? Eight years ba yun? Ten? Twelve? Twelve years, one car. You don't have to be flashy to be good at what you do. You just got to be disciplined. You've got to know your priorities. Diba? I-expose ni Lord yung nasa heart natin. Okay? God will expose it. So, baby steps. Here's a book called Millionaire Next Door. Pinakita nila that second generation millionaires 
actually lose millions. Bakit? Si tatay, mahirap, nagtrabaho, may disiplina, alam niya yung value ng pera, tapos nag-asawa, pag-asawa ng anak, ng anak si misis, pagdating ng anak, nasa magandang bahay na, may kotse na, kompleto na lahat, organic ang food. Okay? Di ba? Hindi niya na alam yung value ng pera, and so what happens? When he gets the money, he or she just spends it. Third generation are left with no money. And that's a study, a secular study. Pag ang mga anak natin, na, we don't teach our kids now on how to handle the finances, what happens? You'll end up just like most millionaires. One generation and all the money's gone. Why? There's no discipline. Yeah. Singles, today, if you're single, tanong natin, no? tanong mo sarili mo, tingnan mo yung salamin, magboyabunda moment ka. Yeah. Saan napunta pera ko? Yeah. Lista mo kung saan napunta pera mo. You would see, it is not because of the lack of money, but rather the lack of discipline. And the Lord says, God did not give you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, of power, and of self-discipline. Okay? God wants you to be disciplined. Mga estudyante, ganun din. Hindi porket naka-allowance kayo, gagastos inyo lahat. Save up. Okay? Learn how to invest. And discipline also means fully relying on the Lord. Sabi ng mga Chinese, wealth does not pass three generations. It's a sad proverb, but it's mostly true. I'm now a third generation Chinese. Okay? So, our generation will be tested. And the prayer is, I'll be able to pass on sound biblical financial principles to my kids that they would know how to handle finances. And so we're starting them young. They have their own bank account. May savings ng panganay ko. Baka nga yung ibang single dito, mas mataas pang savings ng panganay ko sa inyo. Right? She knows. Ang KC box niya, ganito kakapal. Hindi siya bumibili. Parang si Kayla. Okay? Kayla, surrender mo na yung KC box mo. Okay? Okay, so, anak ni Chinky, ganong kakapal ang KC box. So, nagbago na kami ng currency kasi kinuha niya na lahat ng pera. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Dela ko lang kayo. Alright. So, we have to fully rely on the Lord. David Platt says this. He intentionally puts his people in situations where they come face to face with their need for God. In the process, he powerfully demonstrates his ability to provide everything his people need in ways they could never have mustered up or imagined. And in the end, he makes much of his own name. What, what, what the Bible teaches us is that when money comes, you know it's not on your own ability. It is God who has given you the wealth. It is God who tells you, here's a chunk of financial blessing. Go and make it grow. Kaya may parable, diba, of, of, of growing the talents and of planting. Why? Because God is teaching us sound biblical principles. And here's the result, okay? Once you start getting discipline, sorry, itong kwento, no, si Warren Buffett, ah, sorry, si Bill Gates pala to, okay? Si Bill Gates, naglabas na siya ng statement, I'm only giving enough for my kids. I'm not giving everything. I'll help them do startup business and that's it. Hindi ko bibigay yung million-million o billion na meron ako I'm giving it to charity. I'm not giving it to my kids. I'm giving just enough for them. The same way with Warren Buffett, he said, I want to give my kids just enough so that they would feel that they could do anything, but not so much that they would feel like doing nothing. That's discipline. And we've got to learn from people who've managed their finances well. And here's the result. Once we become disciplined, on how we handle our finances. Verse 7, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees, and... and pom... Okay. Pomegranates. Thank you, Chenke. 
Okay? A land of olive trees and honey. A land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you can dig copper, and you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land He has given you. Imagine the blessings. Kunti pa lang yan, patikim pa lang yan ni Lord. Sa Deuteronomy 8. Marami pa sa Deuteronomy 18. Okay? He was saying, I'm bringing you to good land. It's just you've got to learn how to be disciplined. You've got to learn how to rely on the Lord. That money is not the ultimate thing. I am the ultimate thing. I've entered into a relationship with you. Take care of the relationship. Follow my commands. And blessings will come. Yeah. Pero minsan tayo doon, hilig natin sa shortcut. Hindi, Lord. Ito na. Verse 8 na. Verse 8. I claim verse 8. Yeah. Ewan ko nga saan nausa yung mga claiming, claiming. Diba? I claim that. Diba? Pero pag binasa mo yung context ng Bible, maraming mga claim nyo, hindi nyo maklaim. Okay? Wala kayong proper requirements. Eh. No? And you keep on claiming the promises of God and you've taken it out of context. When you look at it, God is after a heart. And a loving God won't give something that would destroy you. And He says, I'm bringing you to that good land if, if we're tight, if we're okay, if you're in a relationship with me. It was like God saying, let's not even talk about this. Di ba, minsan, ang daming preaching kasi lahat blessing, blessing, blessing. Bibigyan ka ng blessing. Yayaman ka. Amen. Amen. Di ba? Tanggal lang shirt. I ganyan. Catch the blessing. Di ba? Next week, magdala kayo ng kung ano, pang-catch ng blessing. And it's centered on that. And it's not centered on God. And God is saying, ah, uh, Pwede din na natin masyado pag-usapan. Gagawin ko yan. Pero hindi yan yung main point ko. Hindi yan yung climax ng kwento. I'm pointing you to something bigger than finances. Okay. The Lord reminds us, verse 14, verse 11, Take care. Okay, binalik na naman niya. Lest you forget. The Lord your God by not keeping His commandments and His rules and His statutes which I command you today. Right? Nagbabudget ba kayo? Command ni Lord yan. Daming scripture. Do you save up for rainy days? Command ni Lord yan. Are you storing up wealth for your children's children? Command ni Lord yan. Hindi po baliktad. Hindi po yung children's children storing up for their parents. It's just parents storing up for their children's children. Alright? Alam ko medyo controversial. Bato-bato sa langit. Tatamaan tayo lahat. Okay? So, it's true. God was saying, I've given you the guidelines. I've given you the power. I've given you the tools that you need. Just trust in me. Follow my commands. Don't worship money. It's actually taken care of, lest you forget me. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied. Now, the Lord is saying, some of you, even if you forget me, dalanggaling nyo talaga sa pera, Lalaki. Grabe. Blessings upon blessings. Finances coming upon you, he says. Then your heart be lifted up. So sabi, galing ko talaga. Makasulat nga ng riblo, libro para pakita na napakagaling ko pagdating sa pera. Na nakalimutan mo na na si Lord nagbigay yun. Sabi niya, then your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you. Again, going back to do you good in the end because in the end, I want what's good for you. That's why I'm testing you. Beware lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. 
mga kapatid, once you start saying, galing ko talaga. Abilidad. Okay. okay. It's all me. It's I who did it. It's I who opened the doors. It's I who, I'm self-made millionaire. The Lord says, be careful when you say that. Be careful when you start branding your... Sometimes kasi we don't say it, but we brand it that way. Yeah. Ganun ka magkwento. Nakala mo ikaw. Lahat. Galing mo. Saludo, idol, worship you. Parang ganun. Di ba? Minsan ganun tayo magkwento eh. Ganun ka mag-pitch ng buhay mo. Nakasentro sa'yo. Ikaw yung namatay sa cross. Di ba? Ikaw yung pina... Parang ganun. Wow, hero. Okay. Di ba? And we pitch it that way. And the Lord was saying, ah, you know, you might have everything, but lest you forget, it's actually all me. It's not your power, it's not your might that have gotten you this wealth. Sa Tagalog, wag lumaki ang ulo. Don't think that it is your ability and strength that brought you where you are. Isa sa mga ninong sa kasal ko, si Stephen Rojas, may ari ng Cityland. He was telling me his story about how he built Cityland. And Cityland was one of those companies na tinamaan noong 1992 Asian financial crisis. Dati ang Cityland, hindi po in God we trust ang nakasulat sa building. Nakasulat sa building pangalan niya. And he said this, he said, it's because when I was riding my helicopter, I wanted to see my name in all the different landmarks of the city. And God humbled me. Right? And that's why now when I build a condominium or a building, it says, in God we trust. Huwag right? lalaki ulo. Alam mo dapat kung saan ka galing. Yeah. Tatay ko, ganun din. From Divisoria, Cargador, hanggang nagkaroon kami ng bahay sa Dasmariñas, hindi po kabite, village. Yaks. Okay. Really? It was like, it was a story of a self-made man apart from Christ. It is when he got saved. When he got saved, we were already in our house in Das Marinas. And after seven years, our house burned down. Yung dream house namin for 20 years na pinag-ipunan ng tatay-nanay ko. Ilang yarda ng tela yun. No? Dami. Bodega ng yarda ng tela yun. Diba? And it burned down. But he did not despise God because he understood where it came from. Now, kahit nandiyan pa rin yung bahay, hindi niya idolo yung bahay niya. In fact, la- half of the month, bumabalik siya sa probinsya niya. Doon siya tumutulong. And again, it's because he has seen what Christ offered and it is nothing compared to what the world offers. And he's actually a good example and reminder for me not to be blinded by whatever the world would offer. Bilis, ma-blind talaga with, with life. Diba? Sa ikaw nga, galing kami Australia, sobrang sarap ng buhay doon. Diba? To the point that Christians who came from the Philippines, okay, who might go there, the temptation is that they'll not declare God is good. They'll declare life is good. Because life's so good all the time. And all the time, life is good. Yeah. Sobrang good life there. Just the comfort, just everything. And so, we just had to remind our brothers and sisters, no, 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 not life is good. God is good. Lest you forget, it is the Lord who has given you the ability to produce wealth. It is the Lord who has opened the doors for you. It is the Lord who has humbled and tested you for your own good. Sabi sa Deuteronomy. And verse 18, the most familiar Deuteronomy 8 verse. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the power to get wealth, not your power, His power, that He may confirm His covenant that He swore to your fathers as it is this day. And if you forget the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them, I solemnly warn you today, that you shall surely perish. Ganda ng words niya, no? I solemnly warn you. Iha, iho, you'll perish. Parang ganun. 
Huh? You forget me, I will solemnly warn you. Okay. You lose everything. Maybe not the money, but everything else that really matters. Like the nations that the Lord makes to perish before you, so shall you perish because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. Yeah. The blessing is more relational than financial. The power, before we even get the wealth, we go through testing and humbling, a humbling stage. And I do hope the humbling stage won't end. Because every time my parents have temptation, na lumaki ulo eh. And we will always be humbled and we will always be tested. And it's coming to the Lord and saying, Lord, I would worship you with my money. I won't worship you to get money. I worship you with my money. I worship you with my wealth. With the little wealth that I have or maybe to the, to the humongous wealth that I have. doesn't matter. Yung mga walang pera ngayon, baka next time, marami na kayong pera. Sana hindi magbago. Kasi nga, expose niya rin yung ano na sa heart natin. So iba dito, walang pera. Pero, at swapang na kayo. Yeah. Hindi lang halata ngayon. Kasi wala naman kayong pera. Yeah. Pero pag may pera na, lalabas yan kung hindi binago yung puso nyo. And it will destroy you. It will destroy relationships. And we've, we've heard so many stories in and out of church, siblings fighting over money. Yeah. Na wala nang kuya ate pagdating sa pera. Walang tito, tita, walang nanay, tatay. Yeah, basta pagdating sa pera. Don't let money rule you. Don't forget it is the Lord who gives you the ability to produce wealth. We ask God for gifts in prayer. But you know what God gives us? He gives us the giver. He's offering Himself. We ask God for supply. He gives us the source. We ask God for money. He doesn't give us cash. Instead, He gives us the bank. And it's in Him. And that's what Deuteronomy 8 is all about. It's saying, run to me. Come to me. Right? What you need is not actually lots and lots of money. Though I can give that. What you need is me. I'm the deal. I'm the real deal. I'm the big deal. Come to Jesus. Come to the Lord. Remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the power to get wealth, that He may confirm His covenant, which He swore to your fathers as it is today. And I want us to do this right now, even as we end. Again, challenge for everyone. Number one, okay, Wednesday, please come next to Wednesday. We're going to teach you basic personal finance and investments. Come here. Okay. Now, it's not guarantee you'll get money, but we want you to know. And we want you to know the basics. And it's part of the job. Okay? Pag frustrated ka, dahil hindi ka marunong maghandle ng pera, it's free. Okay? Secondly, remember. Remember the Lord your God. Okay? Pag successful ka ngayon, remember the Lord your God. Okay? Kung wala kang pera ngayon, for sure, nare-remember niya si Lord. Okay? Kaya nga kayo nandito. Okay? Because remember the Lord your God. Why? No, really, if, if you're struggling, remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability. Diba? So, I hope there would come a day na hindi lang kayo papasok. And again, I hear this all the time in our local church. Papasok dahil bakit? Pwedeng pagkakitaan. Pinagpray mo na yan. Huwag pasok ng pasok. Diba? Ask the Lord first. Yeah. Lord, saan ba? Yeah. Now, unless wala nang kinakain yung mga anak mo, di ba? Siguro for a season, pasok ka lang, but then have a long-term plan. And again, we'll teach you that in, in our Wednesdays, but remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the power to get wealth. He's given us that ability. And I want to pray over you right now, and we're going to pray that scripture over your financial life, over your life today. Right? Can we just all bow down our heads and pray? Lord, we thank you Lord, we thank you because you are a God who is more concerned with our hearts than our wallet. That you're more relational than financial. Lord, that you want to expose what's in our heart. Lord, when you look at us, it's not just short-term, long-term, it's eternal. Lord, you want what's best for us. 
Lord, even if that means going through 40 years of wilderness, of testing and humbling. Lord, because you want to prune us so that when the blessing comes, it won't destroy us. It would actually make us better. Lord, it would not rule us. Lord, it would equip us to do greater works for Jesus. So Lord, I pray for each and everyone here today. Lord, you said in your word, you've given us the spirit of discipline. Lord, and I know it's the hard, one of those hardest things that we have to do. Not just to remember, but to obey the commands of the Lord. And so I pray, Lord, that starting today, I would walk in the ways of the Lord when it comes to my finances. Lord, that I would embrace delayed gratification. Lord, that I would remove idolatry of stuff and wanting more and buying more things that are actually, at the end of the day, useless, worthless, and meaningless. Lord, may I go back, Lord, to being content with what I have because everything I need is in you already. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that our faith, Lord, would shout this out. That our lifestyle would shout this out. Lord, na hindi kami yung Lord, yung bastang bili lang ng bili, Lord, or just continue collecting things. But rather, Lord, we would have that awareness. That, that awareness that you are God and that there are other people in need and that we would not look to ourselves but we would look to you and to others to also be a blessing, a channel blessing, Lord. So we pray, Lord, for each and everyone today. Lord, that today in the Spirit, by faith, will be the start, Lord, of our financial, uh, Lord, revival in our finances. Lord, that we would see growth happen in our finance because we want to be good managers blessings that you've given us thank you Jesus for you've given us the power to get wealth 